Excel Module 2 Textbook Project. Go ahead and click the start file and then go ahead and open it. Enable the editing and the first thing we're going to do is save it. So file, save as, put it in a location where you store all your files. And the name of this one will be Tech. Make sure you have the underscore and your name. So the first thing we're going to do is select the range G3 all the way to G15, which is the expense. And what we would like to do is include the accounting format style, which will put a dollar sign, a decimal, and two places on all of the figures. Then we'll select H3 through H15. And this time, is um, instead of putting the accounting format, um, we don't want a dollar sign for every single one. We're just going to click the comma format. And it does this, what it does is it puts in the commas on um, the salary and the decimal in two places but it doesn't include the dollar sign. And then we'll click M1 and we'll click the number arrow key. Whenever you see a down arrow, it usually means more options. And then we'll click percentage. So it's 20%. And then we will click the increase decimal place. So in M3, after we chose percent, we increased the decimal place. So now it's three decimal places, and we actually don't want any decimal places. So we're going to click the decrease decimal once, twice, three times. So there's no decimal places. Next, we'll select C3 through C15 for the, the date posted. And we're going to click the launcher in the name group. And this is the launcher right here in the bottom right corner. And then you'll click the one that shows um, 14 dash March. Now, if, if you take a peek at all these dates, they're all actually Pi Day. They're all March 14th, 2012. But it's going to keep the dates that you actually have. These are just samples of how you want it formatted. And then we'll click OK. And you'll notice that we kept all of our dates. It's just showing it with the day first, followed by the abbreviated month. Now we'll select I through J. So it started with I3 through J15. And then we'll right click and choose Format Cells. Right click is the shortcut menu. And then we'll choose Currency. And make sure that it has two decimal places. And then click OK. So put it in two decimal places. Now we'll select G3 through I15. So G3 through I15. And because they all have 0 0.00, we're going to decrease the decimal place for all of those. So there are no decimal places. Then click anywhere to deselect. Control Home takes you to cell A1. And then in A1 where the title is, we're going to choose from the font group. And of course, it's in alphabetic order. Right now, it's at Times New Roman. And we're going to choose, I'm going to scroll all the way up, to Calibri. And the font size will be 20. So the down arrow for more options, 20. And then for the cell styles, if you choose cell styles, and again, it has a down arrow, so there's more options, you're going to click heading one under titles and headings. So it makes it a little bit larger and changes the color of it. Now we'll select A2 through J2, which are all of the column headings. And for this one, we'll actually choose um, cell styles and we'll go with heading two. So it's similar, but a little bit smaller. 
and then in L1, which is the revenue date, and we'll hold shift and select L2. So L1, hold shift and select. So you're doing two at the same time. And for this one under the um, this cell stylus, choose heading four so that it does it to both of them at the same time. So we'll select A3 through A15. So all the reference numbers and we'll put those in bold. And then we'll also put them in, in italic. And then we'll take it off italic. So you can change your mind. But we will center them. So the alignment is center. So put the reference number. They should be in bold and um, not in italic, but center. And then what we want to do is um, format paint what we just did, put it in bold and center to the recruiter number. So what you do is you'll click the format painter button, which is up in the clipboard area, click that. And then what you'll do is select B3 through B15 and it copies that format so you don't have to do it twice. The next thing we'll do is select cell A1, again, A1, and this time to J1. So it's the entire range that we're using, and we want this centered. So instead of it just being in the corner on the left-hand side, you'll merge and center. So it puts it in the middle of all of the columns. So next, if you look at um, C2, it says date and it's posted. You can't see all the letters, but if you look into the formula bar, you'll see the other two letters. So to make this one a little bit wider, what you do is you hover between the letters C and D. You won't get those double arrows below it. You have to be in the column headings. And when you hover and then take your left mouse and click, it tells you the width that it is currently at. And we want to increase it so that we can see all of that column title. Um, the book said to go 12.71, so it doesn't have to be exact, but you can get pretty darn close. If you want it exact, you could right click and choose column width and type in exactly what you want. And we'll do the same thing because you can see the locations, you can't see the part of mass and you'll do the same thing. But this one, instead of dragging it to where you can see everything, if you hover over where those two arrows are, but just double click, it'll adjust it to the, the size that you need automatically so that you don't have to guess where it is. Now, if you realize that, um, again, you can't see it on E, um, F looks pretty good, but if you wanted to do multiple columns at the same time, what you would do is actually with the pointer in the column heading where the E is, you can see it changing to an arrow. If you select E, F, G, H, and I, So I'll select um, e, F, G, e, F, G, and H, and then I'll stop. And, I'll, and it doesn't matter where you do the double click, it'll do it for the ones that you selected. And then I'll also do it on L. So I'll select L and double click. And then if I select I and J, I can do the same thing there. So the book had to uh, do it a little bit differently. So for I and J, if you select both of them and then right click, you can choose column width and put in exactly 14. So they're exactly the, the width of 14. And then we'll go back to A1. So on F2, if we right click on F2, we're gonna choose entire row. So in F2, right click, and then you'll choose insert. And from there, you, sh you will choose entire row. 
and then OK. So it puts a, a row above it. And then if you click this little button right here, it's called Insert Options. You can select Format Same as Above, Format Same as Below, or Clear Formatting. So we'll just click the paintbrush again so it goes away. And then if you press Escape, it'll go away. The next thing you'll do is click Row 9. So if you actually hover on the 9 and click the Row 9 heading, you can choose Delete. And you will come up to the top here and delete it deletes the entire row. So it deleted row nine and brought the rest up. So then we'll also do the same thing to column K. There's nothing there anyway. So actually click on the K to select the column. And you can tell because everything is in gray. And you'll do the same thing. You'll just choose delete. If you click the down arrow, it's going to ask, do you want to delete the cell? But we want to delete the whole column. So if you had just pressed the left side, it would have done it for you. So I'll choose Delete Column, and again, it shifted everything over. So now we'll select A4 to A15. And then we're going to choose the fill color. That's the tipped over paint bucket. And we'll select blue, gray, So blue-gray is this one right here, but they want blue-gray text to 80%. So that's that one. It's a little bit lighter, 80%. And then we'll click the borders arrow right next to it. And for this one, they want right border. And if you click away from it, you'll see the right border. And then with it still selected, For the font of the, so the font would be the letter. And again, we don't want red. So again, this time it's that blue gray text two and no percentage. So just blue gray text two. Then we'll just click to deselect. Click the insert tab right next to home. And then we'll choose text. There's a down arrow, so you'll have options, and you want header and footer. And in, in the middle, you want the actual name of this sheet, which is the one at the top. And instead of typing it, just click sheet name. It looks like a formula, but it'll put in the name for you. And this, so this is at the header. Let's go to the footer. Click go to footer. And in the middle, you'll type your name. After you type your name, click in any cell outside of the footer. And then you'll go back to normal. And normal view is down at the very bottom next to the zoom. And you'll click normal. You could also get it in view and choose normal view. And then if you do control home, that'll take you back to A1 which is the beginning of the document. We want you to click File, Print, just to see what it get a peek at it. And then we'll go back to the document. And we're going to select the range I4 to I15, I4 to I15. And we're going to do what's called conditional formatting. So click the Home tab, and it's in the Styles group. Conditional formatting, and this is to add a little pizzazz to our worksheet. And you're going to select data bars, and we'll choose blue data bar. And they want it was considered the gradient fill, which it goes from darker to lighter, where this would be solid. So we'll stay with gradient fill. And then we'll select G4 to G15. And if you notice at the bottom, a little um, bar shows up. And this, this little box here is called Quick Analysis Tool. So if you click that, it's the same data bars and color scale that we just saw a moment ago, but it's a quicker way to get to it. And for this one, we're going to choose greater than. And then we want it greater than 500. You don't have to have any dollar sign. 